All right. Love will keep us together. Maybe, maybe not. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Make Up or Break Up, our weekly show here where we talk about love. I am a love coach and I specialize in the three main areas of love, which is dating help, marriage help, or separation and divorce help. Right. And I always tell people when it comes to dating, you can avoid divorce that I, divorces like I had, if you date well and you date healthily. Um, and one of the main things that we talk about a lot that we'll be talking about today is taking your time, let the dating process unfold. Don't rush it. What's the mm -hmm. point? I mean, even if you feel like, you know, you're 33 and I, you really want to have kids, you can get pregnant at 35. Yes, it's true. So don't be pushing this to be married at 33 and a half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, Lou. That's what people are doing. They're getting married like way too quickly. Well, people get used to their, you know, we talk about death of self all the time. If they're coming out of a marriage, for example, they're used to being married. They're used to being part of the couple. They're used to having a household. Mm -hmm. And that time in between is very stressful for them. They're anxious to get back to it as quickly as possible. Often that leads to poor choices, though. Mm -hmm. Right. And wouldn't you rather be a better whole self that has their act together, that isn't going through the legal process, that has the cost of the legal process behind you? Wouldn't you rather present that to a, a new woman or a new husband or new guy than potential husband? Um, you know, to me, I always question the people that are going to date that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like some of these divorces, Lou, you've you've seen them. They can be so contentious. And yet these people in these battles think it's okay to go out and date. I'm like, you're not dateable material. You're not you're not healthy. You're offering up a legal battle to the person that you date. Like, yeah, and no. I know I, at, at the time I was dating, I was very leery of all that. I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, you wanted to make sure someone was, you know, past, past the battle anyway, certainly the divorce and the healing from the divorce. But sometimes I'd be leery about even getting to a situation where the uh, ex-husband and wife is still contentious about the kids and just going right. at it all the time. It's just not, you know, why do you need to take that on? Mm -hmm. So, well, one, one of the things is people want to, men and women, especially women, I mean, this is my experience. They want to feel like someone loves them and that they're lovable, but they also want to justify it. So when I, if I know them and they were my client through a past divorce and I find out that they're dating already or whatever, um, you know, it's so obvious that they're trying to fill a void. But what they also do is, so say I have a client who's dating and they tell me that somebody that reached out to them on match.com is supposedly separated or my favorite one going through a divorce, but still living in the house. Yeah, yeah. Because that is a common thing. So I say to them, okay, so let me get this straight, Bob. So you just met this woman, Emily, from Kingston, Rhode Island. Yeah. And how'd you do that? You did that online. And how'd you do that? You went online and you didn't say anything about your marital status. You probably tried to avoid it. You probably said you're separated, but you're not. You're still living in the same house. Mm -hmm. and you're not divorced. So it's a lie when people go out there and say that they're separated when they're still going through a divorce. Right. It's like, okay, well, you might be separated. You might be in your own place, but you're still going, if you're still going through a messy time, you know, ixnay on the aiding day. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, um, because what I say to people is, okay, I'm not trying to be mean, but look in the mirror and say to yourself, who'd want to date that? Because yeah. you're probably not looking good. You're probably not eating well. You're not sleeping well. You're drinking too much. Um, you know, you're partying too much. You're going to the beach every day because you want to look suntan for all your dates. Um, you're spending more time on Match.com than you are with your kids. Um, you know, you're so bored that you can't, like, just sit and relax and watch, like, a Archie Bunker show all in the family or something. No, you have to go online and scour the Internet to make yourself feel good, to see if there's other men or women out there that want to date you. It's just a feel good. It's just a security issue. Yeah. Think about what you were like when you were going through your own divorce and your own oh, issues messy. and the amount of, and the stress level there. And do you really want to take that on from somebody else? Yeah. Messy. Yeah. It's messy. And, um, you know, people do that, but I always say, what I say to my clients is you don't want to be dating those kinds of people because say my client is healthy. I'm like, absolutely not. 
There's a bazillion men and women out there. It, and a lot of them are on online. But let's be honest, Lou, there's a lot of them that are post-divorce or maybe they never married, so there's no divorce, but they're eligible. I mean, the, you know, people sort of circumvent what is eligibility. And I teach my clients when you're dating, eligibility means this, 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 and this. And if somebody isn't checking off the boxes like that, they're not, they're not eligible, they're not potential partner, they're not someone that you should even waste your time with. Because this is going to be a numbers game, which I know sometimes I don't like that. You are going to kiss a lot of frogs. <clears throat> You're going to, I know you didn't do that, but <clears throat> oh, here it's a cough. Yeah. <clears throat> I want to talk about, I want to go back to something you talked about, about people <laughs> being bored with their lives and wanting to move on and get in a relationship because they can't find any value in their own life and being with themselves. And that's a great litmus test about when you're ready because you are really effective in dating and pulling a relationship and pulling a partner when you are okay with your own life, when you're not bored, when it's okay to be home alone, when it's okay. I'm okay the way I am. Yes, I'd like a partner, but I'm okay the way I am. I'm having fun. I'm enjoying this. I've got things to do. I've got interest. I'm doing the things I like to do. Uh, you got to get to that point. That's the part where you're really effective with dating because when you're dating because you're bored, you just make bad choices. Right. So when you met the woman that you're with now that you're dating, what, did she have her own life too? Like how, how did you look at that? Like, does she have interests? She does stuff. I mean. Yeah. I mean, well, she was a single mom and she had, a, you know, at the time, a, a 14 year old daughter and, um, you know, doing a lot of stuff and she'd been single for a while, a long time. So, uh, yeah, she had her own life. She was, you know, she had a lot going on actually. So yeah, yeah and that, that was important to me because, you know, again, not coming out of a recent divorce battle and, you know, not in a seem didn't seem like a particularly adversarial relationship with her daughter's father and, you know, seemed to have things, you know, going on, I guess, you know, had a life. Right. So even now, because you guys have been, <coughs> excuse me, I don't know what's going on here, but yep. you've been dating for a few years now. Mm -hmm. Um, do you feel like it's still the same way, even though you're deeper into the relationship? Does she still do things on her own and you still do stuff on your own? Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of it, actually, that there's still, um, you know, her and a daughter have a good thing going on. So they spend a lot of time together and it's it's kind of great. You know, I can go out and do things that I want to do. She goes out and does things she wants to do. It's not like we have to be together 100 percent of the time. Not everything is dependent on that. It's not that ultra focused. I know what that sounds like to some people, but. Yeah, at a certain age, you know, you still want to have your own life. You you want to be two people who are relatively complete that that are uh, uh, choosing to hang out together, right? And I know, you know, <clears throat> many, well, many of the few marriage counselors that I've met who I think are good, not as good as me at my marriage coaching, but you know, the the healthy attitude is always looking at when we look at couples. One of the things that I do, and I have a couple of new. Um, married couples that I'm working with. Um, one of the things that that we see as the healthy attitude is making sure that each person is whole first, which yeah. is why a lot of times in marriage counseling or marriage coaching work, um, I'm looking for deeper issues that need to be worked on individually as well. So it's not uncommon for me to be working with a couple, but have one of the people in the couple have some special needs that need to be met, that need to be looked at, some hangups, some past hurts, whatever that is, right? Yep. yep. And they need to get individual work for that because they're never going to be a great partner if they're still having nightmares about something or they're still getting triggered when someone raises their voice. Right. So that, that's a big one I see in people a lot, especially women, because I'm not trying to be sexist, but a lot of men have, like myself, have like big booming voices. And when they get excited. It's not that they're yelling, but their spouse, a lot of times their yeah. spouse will think that they're yelling. And that is something that. But there's different, we've talked about it before. One of the big things in relationships is the difference in um, conflict tolerance. In other words, one partner can yes. go into a, a conflict and can escalate and mm -hmm. be all right 10 minutes later. And the other partner will take That's my that. husband. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My and husband does that. I'm like, do you even remember what we just fought about two hours ago? He goes, what's the yeah. big 
a big deal. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> it, can get, it can get intense. It, this is uh, with Jan and I, that's the kind of thing. She can get intense and she can raise the level of the conflict. And it's like, it will linger with me for days. And she's okay, like 20 minutes later. You know? right. It's like, everything's fine. So, you know, I have to, you, what you have to do is you have to learn to accept that people have different perspectives and different levels of uh, uh, conflict tolerance. You know, they just, mm -hmm. They conflict, they argue different ways, you know, it's like if, stuff lands for me really hard. So, and part of it is I have to understand that that probably that landed a lot harder for me than she meant it or what she, you know, it was a harder hit to me than she intended to give, but it's just the way she talks about things, you know? Right. Right. You know, you have to and, be, you yeah. Have to understand that tolerance. Way of, you know yeah. what I mean? We're not the same people and you have to, most people assume that when you talk to your partner and you say something, they understand what you say, but it's probably more productive to assume they didn't understand what you say. Because, <laughs> well, people hear things differently. You yeah. think you say something and you think you're, you're communicating and you're getting it across, but chances are it's not going over a hundred percent. And sometimes it, you know, sometimes they're hearing something completely different than what you're saying. Right. And what makes that so hard is because it's kind of like the love languages, right? Like we have, a, we have, the love languages that we like, the way we like to be treated in love, we also push that out on others. Yeah. Which, as we've learned, is the wrong thing to do because the way you want to be loved and then you do that to others is not the way everybody receives love because if it's not their love language, you're missing the mark every time. Yep. And it's kind of like what you're describing as well. It's like, well, you may think that it's good to like argue for an hour before you go to bed because you've heard that it's good not to go to bed mad. Yeah. But the other person which personally I think can be more healthy might be like, I don't want to talk about that right now. I'm going to be all riled up and then I'm freaking not going to get any sleep. Yeah. Exactly. So like, no, if you wanted to talk about this, like five 30 would have been good. We're not doing it at 10. Right. Yeah. There's a difference in conflict. Like, you know, some people want to get it right out and they won't stop that. That's very annoying to me. That's, that's like a, I'm not stopping until you hear and understand and acknowledge and maybe even agree, right, with my yeah. side. I don't like that. There isn't really any argument out there, Lou, that I can think of that justifies, you know, harping on somebody for like an hour or two. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, put it this way. If there's that much detail, then you guys are really messed up because that means you've never talked about any of these things and you're talking about them and it has to take you an hour to cover all the stuff. Like yeah, but sometimes that's the way people work through their own side of the issue too. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> right. Keep grinding on it and keep grinding on it and keep grinding on it. And for some people it's, that works and for some people it doesn't. Or, you know, we just not necessarily healthy because yeah, it's not the necessarily whole, fair for the other person to like allow right. you to just go on and on because you're processing it. <clears throat> I, I've told this story on the show before, but it's so typical of this, this communication and how people land for things differently. Uh, one of our early dinners, we were sitting there talking about music and we were talking about Van Halen and oh. <laughs> And I asked her about the Sammy Hagar version of Van Halen. She went, oh, my God, gross. That's just awful. And I took it immediately myself as, well, I kind of like Sandy ha Sammy Hagar version. Does that mean I'm gross and, you know, and awful and stuff like that? I took it personally. But that's my own thing. You know, she didn't have any intent in that at all. She was just, mm -hmm. you know, it was just the way she speaks is opinionated and uh, intense. And so I took it personally. Go, oh, my God, what happens now if I say I like, you know, Sammy Hagar? Or what happens, you know, because I like the Sammy Hagar version? It's a stupid little thing, but it's illustrating how what one person says and what they're trying to communicate can land differently for the other person. Well, yeah, because that immediate reaction was was so negative. You're like, oh, my God, that's terrible. She hates my she doesn't she doesn't she can't stand like the one yeah. that I really like. You know? I took it personally and it had nothing to do with me. <laughs> well, let's just say it's like, um, like say you had your favorite pair of shorts and let's just say they were orange <clears throat> and they made you feel good. And so before she ever saw them, you're like, oh yeah, tomorrow for the barbecue, this is great. I'm going to wear my favorite orange shorts and like my white shirt. And she would be like, whoa, Nelly, you know, like, oh, what? Yeah. And you'd be like, yeah, they're like my feel good pants. We all have pants and shorts that make us feel good or they're really comfortable. Yes. And then you get into this thing like, oh my God, like orange shorts. Yeah. I don't think that's like a thing. I mean, you know, it makes you feel bad, but really part of what she could be saying is she'd never wear orange or whatever, but it is different if they start to say, don't you dare wear orange shorts to my mom's barbecue because, yeah, you know, 
at a certain point, I think, you know, you never want people to feel like you're dressing them. Yeah. And I don't even know why I thought of that, but. <clears throat> but the way not to go about that is, you know, right. what are you, 12 wearing those shorts? Like, and that, no. That, that, oh, my God, Lou, that is something that somebody would say off the yeah. cuff. Yeah. And, or they and, say, she, and she's talking about the shorts and trying to get a point across. But what yeah. she's doing is, you know, minimizing the person. It becomes right. a personal thing. Lou, and, I'm telling you, it, it's. It's so funny because, you know, when you think about it, and I don't know, I think I do feel like it's more of a female thing, but again, I'll probably get hate mail for that. But <laughs> I always go by my experiences. I'm not saying it's a, it's a true thing right now, but women, and I, I'm guilty of it. Guilty is charged. You know, um, we cringe when we think that the guy that we're going out with isn't quite hitting the mark on how to dress for the hamburger bar versus the crabs, yeah. the crabs place where we're going to, you know, we're just, you know, Yep. Um, and at the end of the day, though, you you really you do need to embrace those things. And like I have to say, like I was fortunate; it didn't end up being the guy that I married. Although you know that was kind of like the one that got away. But there was a guy that I really cared for in my thirties, and <clears throat> I'll never forget. <clears throat> we went. I forget where we went because this was like such a funny thing. We went out somewhere. And he was dressed, you know, it was a casual date. So he had on shorts and a t-shirt, whatever he had, you know, he, yep. was a, he was a good dresser. I mean, he had, had a nice job and I mean, he liked to dress nice, whatever, but so it was a casual date and my eyes were drawn to his feet and I kid you not, he had on bright red sneakers. <laughs> and they were like, I don't know what they were. That was a problem. He had flyers or something. Oh no. I mean, huh. I can tell you when I've last... Well, I would never, it's not my style. I wouldn't buy red sneakers, but I don't know when I last saw like red sneakers. Yeah. But this, and this was a grown man. He was like 15, 18 years older than me. So I was like, you know, whatever, make it up. Yeah. 35, 36, you know, and this guy's like 50, 52. Yep. He might've been like 52 when I was dating him. And I'm looking at this guy, like, and his name was Bob. So I'm like, Bob, like, <laughs> I'm like, what the heck? Yeah. He worked for UPS. My mom nicknamed him. UPS Bob. And, UPS I kept, Bob Ellie. and I kept saying, mom, I don't know why you do that. Cause I've only dated one guy named Bob in my entire life. That was when I was 18 to 20. Yep. And I'm now like 35, 36. It's not like we're all confusing him with another Bob. Yep. Like, what? No, he was UPS Bob. Um, so everybody tends to get nicknames and you know, I had a hard time getting over it. I was, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was just like semi horrified. I'm like, what the heck? who wears red sneakers at age like 52? <laughs> this is like, yeah. But I, I got through it, Lou. I'm only going to say it. And honestly, the funniest thing was, I said, I made a comment about them. I'm like, hey, nice sneakers. Somewhat snarky. Yep. You know? He took it as a compliment. So <laughs> when we talk about how the other person hears it. Yep. He thought I was like, hey, nice sneakers. It's yep. not really what I meant. He was so happy. He's like, I know, right? I'm like, oh, no. He goes, they're my favorite. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's a thing, though. It, it's funny because my girlfriend has no sarcasm uh, receptor at all whatsoever. So, and <laughs> I, I speak in nothing but sarcasm. So, so sometimes there's problems with that. But uh, oh no! But there are a number of ways to have that conversation. Some of which are positive, but we never do the positive ways about you know, geez, what are you doing wearing those sneakers? You know. But the thing you don't say is, what are you twelve? You know. Right. It then becomes a personal attack. It's like uh, the guy doesn't care. The guy isn't you know, isn't worried about those types of things. You know, he just, he had a pair of sneakers. They're probably, you know, expensive sneakers that he's had for a while. He's comfortable with them, you know. I know, I know. but you're it, right. It, but it's even so the more important conversations, my girlfriend and I had a conversation on uh, yesterday, Sunday. No, Sunday. We, we had a conversation, we were having dinner and we had a conversation about travel. She wants to go on a oh. trip. And that's an area that we don't, we don't match up on. And uh, like I tried to tell her, I was, you know, you and I don't, tr don't value travel the same. And she goes, what, what do you mean? She goes, you know, you like go to uh, Alaska or something or Europe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's usually the thing. It's like, it's like, you know, sometimes we'll sit there and, you know, we'll, because there's her daughter and, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So sometimes we'll talk about a getaway. And for me, a getaway, we go, you know, rent an Airbnb or go to the, you know, Wentworth or, or something like that and do a getaway for a day or two. And it's like, by the time we get to the end of the conversation, we're going to Italy or we, you know, we're going 
I'm going to the Caribbean or something. I was like, that's not a getaway for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, it's like the defining line. She goes, well, there's no sense of going anywhere in New England without a flight. You're just going to the same place. I goes, yeah, I don't want to get on a flight right now. That's the thing. Wow. That, okay. That's hilarious because yeah. there's so many cool different things about, yeah. I mean, that's what I love about America. Yeah. You know, not to get political, of course, but I mean. But you have to try to be able to see the other person's you know, person's point of view, like, for example, she's talking, you know, I told her, I was, you know, you and I don't value travel the same. Right. And she's like, right, you don't like new places. You don't like new things like that. Well, no, I, I do. But it's the trade off on the stress and the expense mm -hmm. of it and right. how much I'm willing to pay to get those new experiences well, and things like that. I 100 percent agree. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, like I told her, she goes, like, if you had a trip, you know, if you you were going to choose a trip, where would you go? And I asked and she laughed. I guess, wait a second. Am I getting paid to do something? I'm getting paid to go on this trip. Where would I like to go? Or am I paying for the trip? That type of thing. And that's a good question though. Well, yeah, it's but a good, it's a good question for you to ask because it's like, well, if I wasn't paying for it, <laughs> yeah, you know? I, I got a job there and I get to go, you know, and it, you know, it's neutral or, or I make a little money. There's a, a lot of places I'd like to go. Yeah. It's not like I don't want to travel, but for me, it's an, an equation of, you know, I pay $3,000 for this trip and then worry for the next three months about meeting my bills, that type of thing. I mean, you know, that, that stress is not a trade off for me to go see, a, you know, a restaurant in Paris or something like that. But, yeah. but we all see things differently. You know? Right. And, right. you know, it's and that's the that's the thing that's important, I think, in a relationship, being able to see the other person's side. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to think it's right or wrong, but you have to understand what their thought processes is. All she's thinking is, you know, new experiences, new trips, want to go somewhere, want to do something. And I'm like, you know, I can't spend that money right now. Or, you know, I can spend that money, but there's so many other places I'd rather put it, that type of thing. Right. Right. Well, and the other thing is, um, I mean, if you go, for instance, if you go to Italy, you're not going just to like hang out necessarily in Tuscany, in the middle of nowhere, other than you are experiencing, of course, the culture and whatnot, but you would certainly want to see some cities. And not everybody's into every city. So in, in Italy, there's so many different places to go. I'm not a fan of hitting lots of different places because I feel like, you know, do, do your research, watch videos, watch Rick Steves and yeah. watch his shows like a half an hour on Florence and see if it's that intriguing that you'd want to go there and see that stuff in person. Yep. Because at the end of the day, other than the architecture um, and certainly some interesting, you know, churches and museums, I get it. But, but it's, it's funny you asked about the different lives and it's kind of playing out here because my daughter is getting married. She's getting married next April in uh, Ireland. So I'm oh, making well, it she nice. on Ireland. I must have missed that one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's having several ceremonies she's getting married here legally and then they're going to have a ceremony in northern ireland uh so i'm going on a trip to ireland and she's coming with her daughter and it's like and then she's like i think we're separating at that point because i'm going to spend a couple of days in ireland i'm coming home and they're going like well no if we're going over we're going to greece we're going to, you know, it's like okay have fun and they can do it you know and it's it's you know it's fine because mm -hmm. because they have a life together and they'll enjoy the travel much better together than dragging me along you know that type of thing so Right. But, oh, yeah. That's so funny. Yeah. Well, wow. I, funny. And, and I understand it, but by the same token, you know, you know I got to get back and work. <laughs> yep. That's funny. Uh, my husband and I, I had, I had talked about, I had talked about Ireland because we really wanted to go and I'm from Ireland. And I think part of his family, I think he's got some Irish heritage, but he was afraid, you know, his parents might not want to make that trip. So we ended up staying stateside, but we went to Italy for our, our honeymoon. But then again, when you have a honeymoon, you look at that as a two to three week, you know, if possible, you don't go to, you don't go to Italy for like five days. Right. Um, I mean, I guess you could, but you really wouldn't want to kill yourself traveling around. And then before you know it, you're the fifth day is at the airport, you know, pretty much right. no how you cut that cake. Yeah. Um, the first day, you're flying into an airport. So what do you have there? Three and a half days, you know? Yeah. Um, and so when it comes to trips like that, yeah, I mean, it's really nice if you can do a couple of weeks, but. Yeah. But people do see things differently. They do value things differently. There are all kinds of things going on. And it's like, you know, when we're having this conversation, I say, look, 
I value travel differently than you do, but I understand it's important to you. So I'm willing to make a trip and, you know, we'll do a trip and put something together. It's just, you have to understand, you know, the factors in my equation are different than the factors in your yeah. equation. Right. Well, and that leads me to what we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Um, and we're talking about it again today, which is when you're dating, right? Before you get married, everybody, yep. when you're dating, this is the time to take your time and to get to know each other and to see these innuendos, these differences, these little, you know, little or big differences and asking questions and not being reticent to bring up any topic, especially money, but travel and downtime and leisure time, as they used to call it, that counts because I don't know about you, but even as I get older, I'm not into like slathering up and lying on a beach towel for like six or seven hours as a yeah. kid I would do it but that's probably because I was lazy you know as a teenager it's like there's nothing better than lying on a beach because yeah. you're lying on a beach it's really not because it was all about the tan <laughs> you yeah. know um and kids like to spend hours and hours at the beach because they're just frolicking in the water and they just do right. things with sand that like we haven't done in years you know sand castles those are cool you know um <laughs> But there are people out there, you know, I don't know if it's your girlfriend, but there are people that actually don't mind sweating like a pig in a lounge chair for like five or six hours. It's funny. Uh, we were joking about that because, as you know, I live at the beach and yes, it's like they're out there during the day all the time. And I go to the beach a lot, but I'm going for sunsets. I'm going for moonrises. I'm out there at yeah. night. I'm not yeah. there during the day. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's really nice is to go in the late afternoon and evening and you can read a book. It's so peaceful. Yeah. Because most people that came for the day are gone. You know, they came for the day, like yep. go home for dinner, you know? But it's funny. We just realized that when she's going out to the beach, cause you want to come in as I, I don't lay on the beach cause you live on the beach. I guess I know, but I try, I, I visit the beach and you know, in the morning and the evenings at night, I like going out at night. Right. Yeah. Right. And it's much quieter, isn't it? It's just nice, you yeah. know, and it's cooler. <laughs> I mean, today is brutal out there guys. If you didn't get the news flash, like, it's brutal and it's unhealthy air. We've got that, you know, really uh, crummy air that came out from the West Coast. And it's simple. It's simple day to day stuff. You talk about each of us having our own lives and, and we do to an extent. And I really like that. It's like the it's simple conversation this morning. Her daughter's traveling, by the way. She's yep. with a, a friend's parents and a, a friend of hers in a Dominican. So she's out and she's asking, you know, my girlfriend's asking me, when are you getting home today? I guess, I don't know. I'm trying to decide whether to go to the gym after I'm done, you know, with my shows and things like that. And she's, she goes, well, are you going or not? And I goes, D does it matter? Do you want me home at a certain time? And goes, if I hit the gym, I'm going to be home at four or five o'clock. She goes, no, that's fine. I'll go hit the gym myself. And it's like, so there's not that pressure to always be there. There's not the pressure to do things together. You know, all the time we do, but, you know, mm -hmm. she's fine. If, if I decide to hit the gym, she'll go do something on her own. Yeah. Who did you just say was at the Dominican? Her daughter. With Who's she with? Uh, she's with her uh, a friend of hers and their parents. Uh, but tell her to be careful. COVID is like rampant in the Dominican. Yeah. yeah. Just saying. Um, well, she's got tested to go down and she's got to get tested to come back. So the hotel does the tests and everything. So. Yeah, I don't, test, I don't trust all yeah. those. I know. Especially in Dominican and other countries, but um, yeah, because I have I have friends that are in Punta Cana at this really cool looking adults only resort within a larger resort. Mm -hmm. He sent me all these great pictures. I'm like, yeah, it's not where I'd be right now, but it's just me. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, see again, another perfect example of different tolerance levels. Of, right. Of they, don't have, yeah. they don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Well, so, again, it's about valuing the travel and that equation of COVID versus you know having the experience. Me personally, I feel kind of the same way. It's like, I'm not traveling with Dominican right now, you know? Yeah. But, but we all make it, we all have our own equations and we always, we own, we arrive at, you know, we weigh things differently you know, as individuals. That's the important thing to understand. Well, when she comes back, just make sure they stay at their place for seven or eight days. <laughs> well, I'm vaccinated, so I'm good. Oh, let's not get into that. You can yeah. still do it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of the people in the hospitals right now, we're vaccinated. Yep. Just telling you. Um, okay. So this was one of the sections that I did want to talk about. That's got some cool things in here, which is talking about leisure time. Um, so here's what they say about that. Well, here's a funny quote. Not, it's not funny, but an interesting quote. Leisure. Cause I know how you like to 
you like to get a little philosophical and you like to go a little deeper. Yeah. You'll like this one. Leisure unmasks our weaknesses. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, How so? Like, I thought you'd find that interesting. Yeah. Your leisure time will be taken up by a combination of pleasurable and practical activities. Your practical activities will consist of household errands, maintenance work, or family obligations. Right. Your pleasurable activities may include outings with your children, sports, outdoor activities, hobbies, and travel. Mm -hmm. As time progresses, you'll notice a change in how you travel and spend your leisure time at home. Honeymoon, honeymoon style vacations will give way to family friendly trips. Nights out on the town will be replaced by quiet dinners at home. These changes occur not because you're being forced to stay home, but because you prefer to stay home and really enjoy the relationship that you're in. Yeah. Either way, you will have many opportunities to create memorable moments of the time you share together. So one of the things that they suggest in this book that I've been working through is working separately, fill in this table below. And so you would photocopy this out of the book and it's a chart. So it looks like that. Yep. But that's only part of it. And then that's the other half. Okay. Right there. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to go through the list because I think this is interesting. Okay. Working separately, fill in the table below. Under the column, how often, enter D for daily, W for weekly, or on weekends, and as an O for occasionally, and a, mm -hmm. y, a y for activities you plan on doing once or twice a year. Okay. Because it's interesting how people will be like, yeah, I'll, I'll go to the mall once, but that's only because, you know, <laughs> the gap is there, and that's where my favorite socks and sweaters are, like, because I know you hate going to malls. <laughs> yes. yes. So yours would be like, um, yeah. Yours would be O for occasionally or Y for something you do like once a year. Yeah. <laughs> so <If that. laughs> yeah. So the details are, um, you know, how often and then for how long or at a time. So some people like to travel for like three day weekends. Right. And other people think, um, no, those are lame. If I'm going <laughs> to go away, it's for a week. Right. Right. Um, so the activities are shopping doing chores, running errands, gardening, watching TV, browsing internet sites. So they really get down to like, you know, cause some people like to just go and hang out on the internet for an hour and a half or something, just looking around. Right. Sure. Yeah. Um, and it makes people think about how much time they really are doing it. Visiting chat rooms. <laughs> um, chat rooms. <laughs> well, how old is this book? Yeah. Um, talking on the phone. They probably mean a landline, but we're going to say talking on your cell phone. Yeah, no, never. <laughs> we're going to put texting in here too. Yep. Um, working on a hobby, so some kind of a interest that you have. Going out for breakfast, going out for lunch, mm -hmm. going out for dinner. Yeah. Yep. Going out for what? Drinks. Drink. Yeah. Drink. Yep. Having company over, going to concerts going to fairs or community events. So, you know, like this farmer mark, farmer's markets in the summer, which I love. Yeah. You have a pretty good one up where you are. Tops Hill Fair. No, the farmer's market on Sundays. I, no, I know, but yeah. I just, Tops you were Fair. mentioning fairs. Yeah, Tops Hill Fairs, it's too big and busy for me. I don't like big stuff like that, but. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't even put Y for yearly. Uh, <laughs> gambling. So, yep. but that's a good thing to put on because. You know, you could have someone that likes to play Kino at the bars or you you could meet someone that really likes to go to Foxwoods two or three times a, a year, maybe on weekends. And if you don't ask these questions, you're not going to know. Right. <clears throat> um, attending sporting events, doing volunteer work, participating in outdoor recreational activity, exercising, working out at a gym, playing video or computer games, watching movies. Mm -hmm. participating in recreational activities with your children, playing a sport, attending or teaching classes, doing home repairs and maintenance, attending seminars and workshops. Like I like going to stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then other, because it could be something else in your life. After you look through this, you're like, Oh wait, what about this? Yep. Right. Yep. And 
the whole point is, um, you know, how leisurely you spend, you know, your remaining hours in a week is purely a matter of choice. But the fact is you've got to be comfortable with somebody else being comfortable with how you spend your leisure time. Right. Because someone that like, you know, if, if your girlfriend had a younger child and say you had like a seven year old, it was a seven year old boy that really liked baseball and soccer. Yep. There's just Saturdays. Yep. <laughs> and you could very well be looking at her list and you might be saying, eeks, like that's like W for like weekly or weekends, you know, and she'd be like, yeah, like, you know, it's always like four hours on one day and four hours on the other. And, oh, and then it's also a W because like once a week we get together with the parents yep. and then with two practices and you might be like, are you expecting me to go to the practices and stuff? <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I want to do that two nights a week. And those are the things it's really okay to talk about. But I don't think a lot of people spend time on these kinds of things. We just sort of wing it when we're like, what do you want to do on Saturday? And if they say, I don't know, maybe go bicycling. Well, then you know they like to bike. Yeah. But well, maybe because like an early part of the relationship too, at the time you should be exploring these types of things. People are more um, willing to... Uh, do something that the other person likes, you know, they kind of put aside their own interests early in a relationship, the honeymoon phase, you know, right. Like, you want to go, you like, I know you like to go biking. Let's go biking when, you know, a year into that relationship, that guy's never going to see a bike again. Yeah. You know, he's just, he's just doing right. it because you're in the honeymoon phase. Right. So you definitely want to nail them down on this survey, you know, this little grid, this tiny little, you know, optional thing that allows you to see, yeah, like, if you have biking on there and they don't, maybe you bring it up. Yep. Hey, how come biking's not on there? We went, we, we biked on our second date. And then someone might say, eh, not so much. Like I went because I thought it'd be kind of fun. But other than that, like Lou, I'm never biking with you. Like that's just, I did it because it was a date and I enjoyed it, but I'm not doing it. Like, yeah. That'll be a why for once a year. Yep. You know, <laughs> you kind of want to know that. Yeah. And another key point to this is how you feel about doing these types of exercises with your partner, because if you feel defensive about it, if you do not feel safe talking about some of these things, that's something that you have to address. You have to, you know, you have to understand, you have to figure out why you don't feel safe putting your interest out there. Um, right. Because that's, you know, that's kind of a red flag. That's something you have to figure out and something you have to work through. It's like, yeah, I, you know, you know, maybe I like to go to Foxwoods a couple times a month, you know, and that type of thing. If you're not safe telling your future partner that, or, you know, you know, you're engaged to somebody and you're not safe, you don't feel safe telling them that that's kind of something you have to resolve. You know, that, that issue of safety is a bigger issue that has to be talked about. Right. And there's nothing worse than hearing these words. Oh my God, you never told me that. Yeah. Or this during an argument. Well, if I'd known that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what we're doing here. We're avoiding that phrase. Well, you never told me that. Mm -hmm. Or, well, I know you you mentioned that while we were dating, you went to your mom's a few times, but I thought it's because her sink was backed up. I didn't know it was because every Sunday you go to your mom's. Right. Or every two or three Sundays you go to your mom's. Like, I didn't put that together because that wasn't something, it just seemed like you were always going and doing something on our house. So it, it is really important to talk about family, extended family. How involved is your loved one with their extended family? Because eventually, if they're too involved with their extended family, depending on where the boundaries are and whatnot, that can be a problem. And this is something I work on with couples all the time. See the pyramid? Yeah. See the top one? You. Yeah. You too. The top part of the pyramid is the one and only uh, main focus of every single couple. Now, I say that as it is the priority that every single couple has to learn. They come before the kids. The couple themselves comes before the kids. They come before jobs. They come before your friends. They come before your mom and your dad. Mm -hmm. The spouse or the boyfriend, girlfriend, when you're in a committed relationship, the other person is that is what you're doing life with. And that means that when one person wants to leave the top of the pyramid and go down and do things with friends or do a hobby or go to work, the other person has to be in agreement. Yep. Like, yeah, that's who you are. Or yeah, I'm comfortable with you dropping down to that 
that hobby, which is, you know, canoeing, your interest is maybe you like to go canoeing. Well, do you canoe every night for four hours or do you figure out a way to curb that a little bit? So, right. you're, so you're not splitting your time. You're not, I don't know. You're not spending more of your time doing your hobby than you are spending time in the evening after work with your loved one. Right. right. So when people say, well, that's just, that's just who I am. And you know, I'm, I'm like, especially I always tell people, I'm like, I know what you say about be careful of women who own horses. Yeah. Right. And Great why example, that? by the way. Yeah. And why is that? Uh, because they will never love you more than they love the horse. <laughs> never. It'll never happen. This. Right? I haven't I haven't personally experienced it, but you know, I know women who hang around horses. And right. I, know, I know how they feel about their horses. It's a great example of this whole, whole situation. Yeah. Right. And they're always with their horses. So presumably, if you were dating someone that owned a horse or two, <laughs> um, whether it's like five minutes from where you guys all live or if it's an hour away, either way, the time at the stables, the time that they spend like grooming their horse, the time that they spend just visiting the horse the time they spend riding the horse. And you it's know, important that, if yep. you are, are that intensely involved in something, you have to you have to know that you, you have to let your partner know that before you get into a marriage situation. These are the important discussions to have because you need to know your partner's level of tolerance for this. Your partner may very well say, hey, she loves that, you know, and I'm happy when she's doing that. It's fine. Go do it. It's all great. I, I, hopefully, He's got his own life and it goes, I'll go play golf or I'll go hang with my friends or I'll do my hobby or something like that. And it right. can be healthy. But if there is a different level of tolerance for that thing, whatever it is, parents, uh, horses, boats, you know, for guys, whatever it is, if there's a different level of tolerance, that conflict is going to be there all the time. And you're just going to be dealing with that conflict constantly. So you either have to understand everyone's got to be um, open to that. The, how much value your partner places on that or work out some kind of agreement or compromise about it. Right. Exactly. And the agreement to compromise is key. Yeah. Because like I always say, I say it on the show, when you're in, when you're in a committed relationship, you are giving somewhat of your time and yourself up. And yeah. it really annoys me when people are in my office and they say, well, I just have to be me. Like, that's just who I am. It's like, well, you can be who you are when you're single. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, really, Lou, there's a lot of people that don't really date much. And that's great because they're doing it because they know that they're more of a, a loner. They, they're perfectly fine being alone. Right. They, don't look at it, they don't look at it as being lonely. And they do life just fine, um, you know, not having a significant other. And they, and they want to just – and they know – um, you know, like they camp every weekend or they go canoeing every night, whatever it is. Right. It's not selfish. It's actually, no. to me, it's very considerate that they're, that they're not trying to find the perfect mate that may or may not go along with that. Because at the end of the day, you know, if you're more comfortable being your, by yourself and not in a relationship, what's wrong with that? Knock your socks off. But if that's where you are and who you are, I mean, that's kind of fine. If you're going to be in a relationship, you have to give something to the relationship. But if that's who you are, it's important that your partner knows that before you get too involved in a relationship, certainly into a marriage, because the, your partner has to um, find his or her own level of acceptance with that. Right. And, you know, it's funny. We talk about travel and and that kind of thing. So UPS Bob, um, he liked to golf. And I'm like, Fine by me because I am not getting up at 7 a.m. to go like walk around some grassy fields. It just doesn't appeal to me. Right. I used to golf. I enjoyed it, but I never liked it when it was so busy that we'd have to get a tea time at like seven in the morning. I'm like, that's my Saturday. Like, right. I yeah. go early every other day. I'm not doing that today. Um, but the other thing is, it was nice. We both, he'd like to travel like me. And we went to Scottsdale on a, on a trip once. Some and, good golfing right there. Yeah. And he got to golf. And he felt really guilty about it. And I'm like, no, do not feel guilty about it. Believe me, I'll be lounging around. You know, I'll just hang out in the bedroom. I'll, you know, go get some breakfast and come back. I might go to the pool or not. Like, I'm just going to enjoy myself. And he, he had a hard time with that. And another time. It's funny. He had a hard time with you having your he, own life and your own activities. You could you were okay with not being together. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he did. He was like, I don't know about that. You know, another time. <laughs> 
Another time I really wanted him to golf, but he felt guilty about it. I'm like, no, no, do it. And this was in Scottsdale. Might have been the same trip. Yep. And but I wanted to go get a facial. And so I said, look, you know, he was gonna not go golfing so that because the facial had to be like at 10 a.m. and he was he would have been golfing like by 8 30. Yeah. So I'm like, look, I'm not afraid to drive a car in an area like especially this. It's not like I'm driving in New York City, but even that, like I can handle myself. Right. Um I'll I'll take the rental car, I'll drop you off, and then I'll get my facial and I'll pick you up and everybody's happy. Like yep. you know, like, but I'm like, do not not go because of the car problem. Right. And, you know, the other option is I can call a taxi to get back to the hotel. Yep. It's not that bad. You know, it just he just had a hard time. It sort of struggled with that. It was like, mm, you know. Yeah. And then one of the thing, one of the things that came up during the trip was, I don't know, I, I think it was maybe after the trip. He said something to me like we were talking about the trip, and he goes, "Yeah, um, well, maybe it was on the trip because we looked at some condos just because it was, they looked really cool." I said, "Hey, let's go look." Not because I wanted to live there, but because I'm nosy. Yeah. And I like to look at real estate. And my mom was a realtor for like you know 150 years, so I'm used to going to open houses. That's what I do. Like I just like it. Yep. Especially if it's like some really cool house or, you know, whatever. And I think he misinterpreted that as me being interested in real estate in Scottsdale. So yeah. that brought on a conversation in the car where he goes, yeah, he goes, you know, I'm planning to retire in a couple, in a few couple of years, few years. And I'm like, you're only 52. Like in my mind, people retire when they're like 69 or something. Right. So right. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you know, like in, in a few years, I want to retire and I want to come here. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I was like, so I'm, now that that gave me a whole new outlook for the rest of the trip. Cause I'm thinking, could I live here? Would I live here? I'm not necessarily right. a desert kind of person, even though it's not in, I mean, it is in the desert, but it's like built up. I'm yeah. like, I don't know. It just, I just, I was like, I really loved it. It was really nice, but it was, it was a little bit like La La Land. I mean, it's a very upscale, nice area, but it, it's a little bit unrealistic. I'm like, well, I guess I'd be shoe shopping every day because what else am I gonna do in the desert? Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm gonna have like a thousand pairs of sandals instead of just like fifty. But so, see, that was a conversation and the thing that came up out of the blue that you didn't know about, yeah. which is you know the whole thing you're trying to avoid. Well, the other thing is I was annoyed by it because he said it, but again, he said it in a way that he never even thought of it as being misinterpreted by me. But I started ruminating on it and I started thinking, so how do like, how do I fit in there with Ben? Because Ben was like seven at the time. Uh, I don't know how old. Yeah, it was like, I don't know, seven or eight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, how does Ben fit into that? Because there's no way his dad will let him leave Massachusetts to go live in Scottsdale. Right. Plus, I don't want to live in Scottsdale with, a, with an eight-year-old who's probably going to get a rattlesnake bite or something. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Like, you know. Uh, you know, if there's a snake around, Ben will find it. Let's just leave it at that. Like he's yep. a magnet for like the animal you don't want to run into in the woods. He'll, yeah. it comes to him. <laughs> scorpions. Yeah, I got scorpions yeah. in there, but. That's right. Yeah, actually he went on a trip when he was in college. It was at some sort of an agricultural, ecological, you know, kind of study. And they were out, they were, I think they were, they were in Arizona. And yeah, there was a scorpion that was like crawling along that he spotted, thank God, because it was headed toward like his shoe. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> so, but that, that changed. That was the turning of the tides, Lou, because I was ruminating sure. on it. I'm like, you know, you're just making this statement, but he didn't mean anything negative about it. He's just letting me know. I think cause he thought I liked Scottsdale and hey, I want to retire here. I'm like, well, it's I don't know. okay that he had that plan and he had that wish and that he had that, that value in his life. It's just, everyone has to be aware of it so they can find their own level of, of comf comfort with it. Right. right. It, right. It's, it, you and I'm guessing you agree. It's better that you found out then than three years into a marriage. Yeah. You know, he's kind of the one that he's the one that, you know, the one that you think about that you that got away, but it, he got away for, you know, a different reason too, which was I was still in touch with an ex-boyfriend and he couldn't handle that. Yeah. He, like you broke up with me when he found out one day that, you know, that I was, talking to him and I'm like, what? Like, that's like, you know, I was devastated. That was a hard thing. Cause I'm thinking, I knew I shouldn't have talked about this other guy. Like, I just thought that everybody was mature here. <laughs> like, well, 
again, different perspectives, different levels of valuing. And these are something that the earlier you find out these things, the, you know, the better they are and, and the better off you are, the earlier you find out these differences in perceptions and values. Right. Right. Yeah, I know. It, it's crazy, but you just never know. But again, that that I would have preferred that conversation to come up a little bit later as more of like a, you know, where do you see yourself going? Yeah. But, you know, I guess the reality was I also was surprised that this was probably coming up sooner than later because I just have never met that many people that retire at like 54. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, I could probably work myself into that idea. Like when you're 65 and I'm 50, 55, right? Like, yeah. cause he, yeah, he was like 15 years, I think older than me at 50. I could think about going to Scottsdale at 35. I'm not going to Scottsdale. Right. Yeah. Yep. I'm still checking out, you know, Boston restaurants and I, and I like the ocean. So that was a whole thing too. I'm like, well, and Ben's more on his own and, you know, you're in a different place. Right. But if you are an avid golfer to the point where like, I mean, he was like golf pro material. Mm -hmm. You're an avid golfer. You're retiring. If you can, you're going to retire in a warm climate where you can golf all the time. Right. Because in New England, you can't golf in January. Right. And his opinion of a good retirement life would be being able to golf, which is fine by me. I could care less. I'm like this. Now that would work for me later on because I like the fact that you go golfing, I'll get a facial. You go golfing, I'll go buy some new shoes. Like, I don't care. That's fine. You know? <laughs> yeah. But again, the main point here is better to have that conversation three years before a marriage than three years after a marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think, yeah. Yeah. The, I don't think there was any way he was going to wait for me to catch up in my fifties to then move to Scottsdale. Yeah. It's just no way. And, you know, some people really do that. They want to be like, that's why people go to Florida. Cause it's like, you know, I want to be in warm weather all the time. I don't really want to deal with like five months of cold, snowy weather. Right. What? Why not? Like if you're not working and you could live anywhere, I, you know, as I get older, I understand the appeal of being able to live anywhere. Like you're near the ocean, yep. but if you weren't, you know, you might be thinking, yeah, you know, I'd like to figure out a way to get toward the ocean because, you know, not 20 and like traveling the world. But if, if, if I want my days to be really enjoyable for downtime, you, you know, it's really nice when you can make it work that it's an area that you really enjoy. Yeah. No matter where you are. I mean, you could be in Idaho and there's beautiful spots in Idaho. Um, yeah. For me, it's about separation. For me, it's about you get on the island and you're just away from everything. You know, you're kind of out of the, you know, for me, everything in my life right now is about lowering the noise floor and lowering the stress and being in a situation where there are at least a few hours in my day when I'm not worked up about things. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So, that, so this is a 20 minute drive, but I feel like I'm somewhere else. I feel like I'm far enough away from it that the noise floor lowers. Exactly. Hey, so we have to go because it's after 12. Yes. And I have another meeting, um, but it was great seeing you today, Lou, and talking about dating and questions to ask and people being authentic. Because at the end of the day, if you don't get this out now, it could be problematic once you're married. Right. Find out as much as you can about, you know, about each other before you get too far into it, because you want to find out where these conflicts are and, and try to work with them before you get married. Right. And also before you're engaged, because what happens is yeah. once people are engaged, they don't want to break an engagement off. Right. And then they start compromising in a lot of ways that they shouldn't. So I'm like, you need to get everything out of the way before you accept a ring or say, I do. Yep. You know, but anyway, great show today. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. I feel really pumped up now for my next meetings. That just energized me talking about travel and, you know, people being able to speak up and, you know, yep. let people know what they're up to. So, hey, everybody. Is the Facebook page, cast, catch fast, uh, past episodes of the show on there as well. You can catch all the great, great episodes of Make Up or Break Up. And we'll see you all next week at this time. That's right. You can go to my website and email me off of it. JudithJameson.org. Be well, be healthy, and we'll see you next week. Stop.